Hello everyone, thank you for signing in and watching my live stream. I'm Mr. Matt and this is Dr. Tot. Dr. Tot, would you like a cookie? You want a cookie? Yes, okay. And welcome to Pre-Algebra. The last few weeks we've been talking about adding and subtracting. Well, first we talked about writing, saying, and rounding whole numbers. Then we moved on to adding whole numbers, then subtracting whole numbers. We learned that addition and subtraction are, can be thought of as opposite algebraic operations or arithmetic, I should say arithmetic uh, operations, so they undo each other. So if you subtract by two and then add by two, you've just done nothing. You've just undone what you originally did. And this week, and so we can think about those as inverse relationships, so one undoes the other, addition undoes subtraction, subtraction undoes addition. This week we're talking about multiplication. So multiplication is the scalar projection of one number over times, over uh, as many times as the other number. In other words, it's one number plus itself for the number of times that is the other value. So three times four can be thought of as three plus itself four times, or it can be thought of as four plus itself three times. Um, we can understand that with multiplication, there's an implicit relationship between the values because it's a projection. And we're going to learn that division next week when we talk about division, division is the opposite of multiplication. So just like when we added by 2 and then subtracted by 2, we undid everything. If you multiply by 2 and then divide by 2, you've undone what you have originally did. Um, and the converse is true too that uh, multiplication will undo division. So let me share my screen with you and we'll go through some problems. And just a reminder, this is a live session so there's a little bit of a delay with the iPad but I'll keep track of that in the broadcast uh, screen. If you have any questions at any point, please um, let me know in the live chat feed or you can drop a comment below if you're watching the recording. But the overall theme here again is that multiplication is the opposite operation of division. Multiplication represents a projection of one value or in other words it is one value added to itself a number of times equal to the second value. There should be a there should be a comma in there, just like a little grammar note. Um, but it's one value added to itself a number of times equal to the other value. So like I said before, 3 times 4 is the same thing as 3 plus itself or added to itself 4 times. So 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Or, oops, excuse me, it can be thought of as 4 added to itself 3 times, like 4 plus 4 plus 4. In either case, 3 plus 3 plus 3 4 plus 4 plus 4, excuse me, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, or 4 plus 4 plus 4, or 3 times 4 is the exact same thing and will always equal 12. The result of a multiplication statement is called the product. So we learned before that the result of an addition statement is a sum. The result of a subtraction statement is a difference. The result of a multiplication statement is a product. So we would say that the product of 3 and 4 is 12. So if we were to write that out into English, and that's really important to understand or understand how to convert from math to English or vice versa. You're going to see that a lot on the PSAT and the SAT. Um, and remember that all of these words, is, is equal to, 
is the same as equals, all of that connotes the equal sign. So everything on one side will be before that word, that identifying word or phrase. Everything on the other side will come after that word in the English statement. So 3 times 4, the product of 3 times 4 is 12. If you have any questions, and just let me know. Some additional vocab, like I said, um, the product is the answer to a multiplication sentence or math, uh, multiplication statement. You could also see the word times or the phrase multiplied by. Um, scaled is another adjective that uh, represents or connotes multiplication. Remember, Addition and multiplication are commutative, meaning that the order does not matter. Meaning that you can flip the problem around, like 3 plus 4 is equal to 4 plus 3, both of which are 7, or 3 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 3, both of which are 12. On the other hand, subtraction and division are not commutative, and therefore order does matter, meaning that you cannot flip the problem around. Notice that 3 minus 4 is not the same thing as 4 minus 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1, 4 minus 3 is positive 1. Those are two different results. The same thing is true for division. You can't switch division around because 4 divided by 3 would be 4 thirds. 3 divided by 4 is 3 fourths. Those are two totally different numbers, so the order does matter with subtraction and division. If there are any questions like normal, just let me know. Um, otherwise, let's look at a few questions here. So we'll start with just a few one-digit numbers. We'll mo move on to just a few two-digit numbers. And then um, I wanted to really focus in on three-digit numbers because we didn't get to them in session one. So I'm going to give you two minutes. Please look at 6 times 7 and 2 times 3. Okay, so let's look at these two. So 6 times 7. We can think of 6 times 7 as 6 plus itself 7 times. So if I had 6 items and I plused or added to itself 7 times. Now you could count all of these individual items up 
but that of course would always take a really long time. I'm gonna need one more there. So instead of visually representing the items, we can use numeric values and just say six plus six plus six plus six plus six plus six plus six. And then individually evaluate these sums. So six plus six is 12. So for each pair, I can write out a sum of 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. 24 plus 12 is 36. 36 plus 6 is 42. So 7 times 6 is equal to 42. Two times three is much easier. That's just two three times, or three two times, which numerically is just two plus two plus two. Two plus two is four, four plus two is six. I'm gonna write out three multiplication facts that you should really work hard um, in memorizing. These are the three hardest, in my opinion, of um, one-digit numbers, one-digit products. So if you memorize these three, they're really the ones that get a lot of students. So 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times 8 is 48. 7 times 8 is 56. So you just want to um, memorize these values because they're the ones that don't really come to mind as easily as the others. Um, other values are either multiples of 2, multiples of 3, or they're perfect squares like 3, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, um, 64, so on and so forth. Um, so apart from those values, these are the products that really get students mixed up a lot. So you want to spend some time and memorize these three. If you have any questions, then please let me know. I'll give you two more minutes, and then we'll go through these next two problems. We have six times five and eight times four. Two minutes. Okay, so 6 times 5 is 6 plus itself 5 times, 
So we could write out individual token markers and count up all of the individual tokens, but we could also recognize that the number six is a symbol that represents six items. So this is the same thing as six plus six plus six plus six, which we could evaluate because six plus six is 12, 12 plus six is 18, 18 plus 6 is 24, 24 plus 6 is 30. So 6 times 5 is going to be equal to 30. Eight times four, same type of thing. We can think about this as eight plus itself four times. So you could write out individual tokens to represent that and count them all up. Or we can recognize that eight represents eight items. So this is the same thing as eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. Oops, sorry. Recognize that eight plus eight is sixteen. 16 plus 8 is 24, 24 plus 8 is 32. So 8 times 4 is 32. If you have any questions, then please let me know. Now let's look at some two-digit products. Remember that for two digits, we want to orient ourselves vertically first then we multiply through digit by digit. When you get to a digit past the ones digit, you have to add a place marker zero in the resulting answer line when, before you start multiplying through. So I'm going to give you one minute and then I'm going to set up the problems vertically and start the problem, number, uh, problem one um, just so you get an idea, and then I'll give you some time to finish it. So I'm going to give you one minute. Please just look at problem number one. Okay, so looking at the first one, if we orient ourselves vertically, then I usually, I like to put the uh, smaller number on the bottom. You'll get the same result, um, but it just is a little bit easier for just how I standardly do it, but you can choose to do whatever you like. Um, but if we, either way, we orient ourselves vertically by matching up ones digit with ones digit, tens digit with tens digit, so on and so forth. And now we're going to multiply. We're going to have the ones digits, then we're going to have the bottom ones digit and the top two digit. So in orange, we're going to have two times three is six, two times seven is 14. But I don't have anything to regroup, so I'm just going to write out. I don't have another digit to regroup into, so I just write out the 14. Now I'm going to have to put a placeholder 0 before I multiply the 3 times the 3. Oops. Sorry, I'm trying to get the same color. So 3 times 3 is 9, but I'm going to have to put a placeholder of 0, and then 3 times 3 is 9. Then the last one is the tens digit times the tens digit. That's going to be this 3 times 7. 
3 times 7 is 21. I don't have another value to regroup over with, so I'm just going to write the 21 out, and now I add all the numbers up. 6 plus 0 is 6. 4 plus 9 is 13, so I keep the 3, carry the, regroup the 1 over. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus another one is 3, carry down the 2. So the answer here is going to be 2,336. I'm going to give you two more minutes. Please look at the second problem, 45 times 67. Okay, so multiplying the ones digits, we're going to have 5 times 7. 5 times 7 is 35, so we keep the 5, carry the 3, we we'll regroup the 3 over. Now we're going to have 5 times 6. 5 times 6 is 30, 30 plus 3 is 33. We don't have another digit to regroup over, so we just write out the 33. Now we're going to have to mark a placeholder of 0 because we're moving on to the tens digit. Now we're going to have 4 times 7. 4 times 7 is 28, so keep the ones digit of 2, but now we have another digit to roll over, so we can carry the 2 over. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 plus 2 is a 26. We don't have another digit to carry over, so we just write out the 26. Now we need to just add up the values. 5 plus 0 is 5. 3 plus 8 is 11. Carry the 1. 3 plus 6 is 9, so keep the 0. Sorry, 3 plus 6 is 9, but with that extra 1 carried over, that's going to be 10. So keep the, z the ones digit of 0, carry over the um, hundreds digit of 1. Because that's in the that's because it's in the hundreds digit, so we carry that over to the thousands. One plus two is three, so your answer here is going to be three thousand fifteen. If you have any questions, then please let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to give you three minutes. Please look at these two questions together and then we'll review.
Okay, looking at 76 times 15, it's written 15 times 76, but I'm going to write the smaller value on the bottom. So we're going to have 5 times 6, that's going to be 30. So keep the 0, regroup the 3. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 3 is going to give us a 38. Now we're going to have the placeholder of 0, and 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 7 is 7. So now if we sum these values together, 0 plus 0 is 0, 8 plus 6 is 14, keep the 4, carry the 1, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 7 is 11. So we're going to have 1,140 as an answer to number 1. For the second value, we're going to have six, 6 times 6, that's 36, so keep the 6, carry the 3. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 3 is 27. Write your placeholder of 0, and now 2 times 6 is 12, so keep the 2, carry the 1 over. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Adding the resulting values, we're going to get 6 plus 0 is 6, 7 plus 2 is 9, 2 plus 9 is 11. So our answer to number 2 is going to be 1,196. If you have any questions, then please let me know. Now I'm going to give you three minutes. Please look at number one. It's the first three-digit by three-digit value. It's the same exact process, just now you have more digits, and you might have to carry over a few more times, but it's the same exact thing. Um, when you go, uh, let, I should note one thing. Now when you go to the third digit, when you start multiplying, if I write this out, so this is going to be 584 times 243. When you get to the third digit, instead of a place marker of one zero, now you're in the hundreds. So your place marker on your third line down should be two zeros. So when you're multiplying by the four, that's in the tens digit in 243. That's in the tens, so you put a place, dig a place marker of one zero. The two is in the hundreds digit, so you need a place marker of two zeros. So that's my only hint. I'm going to give you um, three minutes and then we'll go through the solution.
Okay, so multiplying through, we're going to get 3 times 4, which is 12. So keep the 2, carry the 1 over. 3 times 8 is 24. 24 plus 1 is 25. So keep the 5, regroup the 2 over. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus 2 is 17. There's no other value to regroup over to, so just write down the 17. Now we'll move over, move on rather, to the 4 in the tens value. So because it's in the tens value, I have to put a place marker of 0 in the ones to represent the tens unit, that we're starting with the tens unit. 4 times 4 is 16, so I'm going to keep the 6, carry the 1 over. 4 times 8 is 32, 32 plus 1 is 33. So I'm going to keep the 3, carry the 3 over. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 plus 3 is 23. There's no other digit to regroup over into, so I'm just going to write down 23. Now we're moving on to the hundredths value, so I need a place marker of two zeros in the ones and the tens unit. 2 times 4 is 8 which is not greater than 10, so we just keep the digit. 2 times 8 is 16, so keep the 6, carry the 1 over. 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 1 is 11. There's no other digit to ro uh, roll over into, so we just write down the 11. And now we just need to sum up all of these units. 2 plus 0 plus 0 is 2. 5 plus 6 plus 0 is 11, so keep the 1, carry the 1. 1 plus 7 plus 3 plus 8. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 plus 3 is 19. So I'm going to keep the 9, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 6. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 6 is 11, so keep the 1 carry the 1. 1 plus 2 plus 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. And then lastly we have this 1 that is, in, is unaffected by anything else so it just gets carried down. And so our answer here is going to be 141,912. If you have any questions at all, then please let me know. Otherwise, let's look at number two. I'm going to give you three minutes, and this will probably be the last uh, question for today. On Friday, we'll pick back up and concentrate on just a few two-digit two -digit numbers, and then mostly with three-digit by three-digit, and maybe even a four-digit by four-digit number. So three minutes, and then we'll review.
Okay, so starting with the ones digit, we're going to have 3 times 0, which is 0. 0 times anything is 0. 3 times 9 is 27, so keep the 7, carry the 2. 3 times 5 is 15, 15 plus 2 is 17. There's no other digit to carry over into, so we just simply write the 17. Now, let's go on to the tens digit of 1. Because we're going to the tens digit, we need a place marker of 0 in the 1's value. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 9 is 9. 1 times 5 is 5. Now let's go on to the hundredths digit, that's 1. Because we're in the hundredths digit, we have to write a place mark of two zeros. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 9 is 9. 1 times 5 is 5. So now we're going to sum all these values up. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. 7 plus 0 plus 0 is 7. 7 plus 9 plus 0 is 16, so we keep the 6, carry the 1 over. 1 plus 1 plus 5 plus 9, so 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 5 is 7, 7 plus 9 is 16, so keep the 6, carry the 1, 1 plus 5 is 6. So our answer here is going to be 66,670. And I think we have time actually to do one more quickly. So let's look at number three. I'm going to give you two minutes this time, and then we'll go through the solution. Okay, so this guy we have 151 times 312. Notice I wrote, the way that I wrote this vertically is I actually, I put the larger one on the bottom and I told you I usually put the smaller one on the bottom. It doesn't make any difference at all, um, but just to make sure that we do this consistently, let me go ahead and just change this to 312 times 151. But know that this they're going to produce different values in the interim steps, but overall the result will be the same. For the 1's value, we're going to have 1 times 2, which is 2, 1 times 1, which is 1, 1 times 3, which is 3. Now we're going to go to the 10's value, so we need a place marker of 0. 5 times 2 is 10, so keep the 0, carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. 5 times 3 is 15, and we don't have another digit to carry over, so we write out the 15. Let's move on to the hundredths value. So we need two place markers of 0. 
the value in the hundreds, the digit in the hundreds value is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. So if we sum all of these values up, we're going to get 2 plus 0 plus 0, that's 2. 1 plus 0 plus 0, that's 1. 3 plus 6 plus 2. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. So keep the 1 regroup the tens digit of 1 over. 1 plus 5 plus 1 is 1 plus 5 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7, and then 1 plus 3 is 4. So our answer here is going to be 47,112. If you have any questions on anything that we've done today, then please, please, please let me know. I'm here for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tomorrow is the uh, writing skills section, um, so you can look forward to that. And then and also uh, on Friday, we'll continue with two-digit and three-digit values in our pre-algebra session 5 to 545. If you find these videos helpful, then please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, otherwise, Tater Tot, do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Tot, you got to say goodbye. Come on, Dr. Tot. Come on. You got to say goodbye to everybody. Come on. Can you say bye? Can you say bye? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great night, and I'll talk to you on Friday.